the violence and everything that's going on in Gabriel Garcia Marquez's 100 Years of Solitude. He talks about something that actually happened, the conflict with the banana company, but brings in magical realism and kind of gives it another feel and how that um, plays into the history of the region as well. So I don't know if you guys enjoyed that chapter as well. Yes. Have any comments That was on probably that? my favorite chapter. Yeah, yeah me too. Um, and one thing that, one question that came to mind was how did magical realism and literary boom influence or change the history of Latin America? I find that in that chapter and also in the movement um, that it embodies the passion and nationalistic transformation from colonial subservient victim mentality of nations and peoples to the expression which is um, authentic using fantasy to kind of get under the radar like if you look at those guns in their hands you say there's a political message there there's bullets on their chest but wow look at the colors look at the shapes that's really like um, a mixed message and I find it to be beautiful the way Wynn put all of that in one chapter because he just jumped from one art form to the other and having grown up on classical European art mostly like the museums and so forth my mom who was a painter told me look at Latin American art because if you notice the choice of colors you don't see that combination in anywhere else on earth that's Latin American those are very often chromatic colors. It's often cartoon style drawing. Mm-hmm. It's not the illuminist. It's not impressionist. It's very specific to this continent. So the same you can say with the music. Mm-hmm. The introduction of African movements into samba, salsa, merengue, bolero, mm-hmm. all of those specifically Latin American. And if you go through any of the art forms, the, the writing also. Mm-hmm. So I love the book, like Water for Chocolate. Oh, yeah. That's also that. a movie, right? Yes. But the I book saw that in the movie. It yes. tends to be. It's not yeah, book. It's it's Spanish and English in the book. <laughs> so again, <laughs> so like if you're a chef, wow. But anyway, <laughs> it incorporates so many political <laughs> ideas, but it's like I so appealing to the more. senses. Yeah. While it's giving you the message of, the soul of the people. So when you finish seeing one of those movies or you finish looking at one of those works of art, you really get to know much more about Latin American um, fashion and culture than if you read a news article about the political coup that happened at the state capitol, for example. Yeah, magical yeah. realism for some reason just made me think back to the Harlem Renaissance. Yes, mm-hmm. that's yeah. very much. So that's what kept coming into my head, like this the absurd and rebirth of, you know, this consciousness and creativity. So it just reminded me of the Harlem Renaissance of that. In the, the, the last question, mm-hmm. um, I, in, at the beginning of the chapter, he said that he is going to meet with uh, some people in Cuba, but they, they meet with him before 10 o'clock. Because at 10 o'clock is the Brazilian soap opera, mm-hmm. the Brazilian ah, yeah. opera, La Esclava. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, La Esclava, la, uh, uh, everybody in Cuba during that telenovela, La Esclava, don't uh, work the, before 10, mm-hmm. do everything before the telenovela. Because at the time of the telenovela, it's just to see the telenovela. Mm-hmm. The Brazilian telo- telenovela in Cuba la, was like the war boom was like boom in Cuba. For example, every Brazilian telenovela brings something, uh, uh, yeah. Cubans uh, try to imitate some styles of the telenovela mm-hmm. in every telenovela. For example, like one telenovela, uh, the pro- one of the protagonists have short hair. And in, became a trend. <laughs> in, 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 in the first month of the telenovela, all women in Cuba have that short <laughs> hair. <laughs> Uh, like Cubans, like uh, like like see the, the Brazilian telenovelas was like the like, like yeah. the it thing. The, the, one, the one that they want to do. Mm-hmm. When what was your favorite chapter? Uh, it would be the, the international relations one. It would be about chapter twelve, I think, and they just 
States. Since you gave a pretty good overview of the situation internationally, while we'll also going to a couple little details that I think that I think that one was. Is that the one, one on revolution? Week. Yeah, I, I think I think it's part of it. Yeah, and it talked about uh. We made, we made slides. Slides. Do it. Little, 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 little. We made slides. What did you like in that chapter? <laughs> we made all the slides. Um, <laughs> do you guys want to know what that is? Yes. Is it that, in Honduras? No, it's not in Honduras. <laughs> For the first time, I have decided to rent up. Panama? Panama. Oh. Yes. oh. It's the 1989 invasion of Panama. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna post the documentary yeah. with Jack Panama. Uh, I remember that. You do? Ooh. You remember that picture? I remember a lot more than that. Though. Were you I'm in Panama? Back. No, I was, no I was not in Panama, in but Panama, I I do remember quite military. well. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, you, you know, honestly, Wayne, I'm with you right there. Chapter twelve was one of my favorite chapters, and honestly, it, it was just such a such a like change from from going to. Magical realism and religion, <laughs> yeah. and then boom, boom, back to the the I one are. thing the that's real world. the one thing that's at the core of what Latin America has struggled with, which is the idea of sovereignty. And to if me, I if I sorry to interrupt you, but I think it, I, your statement made me. I just wanted to put it out there that the real world isn't magical realism, kind of in a way, the real world too. That's like but they're just I making it look nice. But even not then, I I think it is the real world. Like God used to say that. He didn't write fiction. Like he just wrote stories that his grandma would tell him and things that he would see in his home country. And that's what I really appreciated about the magical realism book. I mean, obviously the contents of it, but also the way that when put it out there in um in like a hey guys, this stuff that it gets sidelined as like artsy, fartsy, like not not really important for history is actually really important and these pictures and the songs and this literature and, the it's, and, and also a big thing that he tried to to emphasize was how this was for the masses this was for a time where like okay we're trying to reach the people we're trying to revolutionize this whatever oppression you know, colonism whatever you want to call it the poetry circles that he mentioned reaching mm -hmm. out so like it starts with Latin America boom okay what about the people that can't read Boom, the murals, the, murals, boom, the yeah. poetry circle. Boom. So I think uh, the music, how he brings it all the way from, from the originals to like contemporary reggaeton and stuff like that. What What is he trying to say? He's trying to say, hey guys, again, this is also real. This is also important. And finally, as a humanities person, I was like, yes, like endangered states, all that is important. Politics, economics, I'm coming around to it. But <laughs> guys, oh, this, this is also very real yes. and very legit and very, yeah. very please. like. You so know, does she usually? Please always <laughs> steers away from the from the dreadful world of economics, politics, and economics. Oh. And and again, it doesn't like. <laughs> it is dreadful. It's, 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 it is very dreadful. Very dreadful. I can't way, live without politics. It's very depressing. In I mean, a way, economics it's what Grace is a dismal was saying. Science. It's. A, it's I think, at least for me personally, again, when you're not in that niche that you don't study IR or political science, what happens? It's like when people watch the news. Who's watching CNN? A small niche of people. Yeah. What are the most people watching? Univision. Univision. This is like the Univision of this all this. This is the stuff that's going to get to the masses. This yeah. is the stuff that people that are not interested in this. Yeah. Like, for me personally, it was reading like, like. But um, then again, he also mentions that what you say that how, how did these, um, uh, Jose in my, uh, go back to my, oh no. Right there. Well, Jose, Jose Vasconcelos, his whole thing about getting the masses, which the majority are the minority. And like she said, how do you get to a, how do you get to a a, a population that mm -hmm. is illiterate or not or they know very and little has, indigenous mm -hmm. literally and in the again, animal and and again even not that interested like except novelas no, no, right. what are you more likely to watch cnn it happens to me at home all the time I watch my, both. my yeah. husband is super into politics like he nerds out he loves to watch that stuff i get home and he knows, like, I'm like, no, just take that off. But, like, oh, let's watch, you know, Juan Inez de la Cruz. It's, it's a Netflix uh -huh. series. I'm like, yeah, let's watch that. So that's, like, where it's we come. Like history. We come to point. Yeah, we kind of connect on that. Yeah. Story. I have two like, iPads, so I'm watching one here and I'm watching two. And so. what got me interested in all this, well, obviously, I'm Colombian and I have a bias. But when I started reading in Spanish and reading these novels and, and searching up the author and, like, oh, look, it's happening in Argentina. Mm -hmm. Oh, crap. Like, now I understand what I'm reading more. And I think that's part of what makes this chapter so important is that when he yeah. points that out as a very real 
thing. Like it's not just like oh magical. Ha ha! It happens often. Not magical frivolous. realism. Yeah, not this frivolous. frivolous cutesy thing that is imaginary. No, it's like film. And all these it things. Was poetry, 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 music, it was marginalized. Poetry music. It was marginalized in the very, galleries. It's very real, and it's part of what reaches a big public that otherwise may not be interested. And even us here in the circle, we're a small minority because we're in higher education. A lot of us in political science. A lot of us have opportunities and access that the majority do not. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to point that out. Nikki Jewel. Wow, <laughs> no, Nikki Jewel. Yeah, Bonnie said that okay. art doesn't reflect I really life. Know. It isn't art. Yeah. So you want to make your case for uh, sovereign national sovereignty? Oh, oh absolutely. But, <laughs> but, but before, but before we go into that, I just want to say that that was an excellent yes. contribution to it. I, I was, like, I'm literally like floored. You know, because, because <laughs> I, you're not. No, no, I will sit down on the floor. But uh, um, honestly, we we tend to forget that this is very important. Um, it's it's a it's one of the most important ways to get to the people that are that are out there. And honestly, if I if I have to review our group, and I hope this doesn't work against. Not, <laughs> so don't mention it. Just move on. Move on. Discuss sovereignty. No, but like. I'll mention one of the weaknesses in our group. We both are not like that well versed with magical realism and it's all these other things. My focus is everybody wants to say economics, economics, politics, and I are, and I are. Yeah. So yeah. politics. So I'm doubly too, right? depressing. I are, right? <laughs> but this could be the PR to your IR. Exactly. Exactly. So, so it could work for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so the thing is that we we need that perspective. As well, mm -hmm. and that's yeah, something that I want to address. You know, it's it's start to incorporate yeah. other disciplines into what I into what I study. Of course, it's not going to work with my you know my final research, but it's <laughs> definitely something that I want to keep in mind going forward. As, it as and it opens your mind. Yes, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Because if you see the slides that I made, man. if you see the slides, <laughs> you put it together. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, look at the slides that I made. You know, it's a. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's really good. But it's very, yeah, it's very impactful. Just, but it's absolutely. to the point. That's, 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 that's for my say, Sorry, I, I don't want to like toot my own horn, you know. But uh, I'll say no, this. I I really liked. Are he this. All wait, wait, this. So wow, yeah. chapter five, how it talks about uh, you know, he, they speak about capital sins, you know, the Brazilian example, and how it goes from like this dictatorship and into the rise of. Of what is uh, yeah, you know, the democracy, the return to democracy, was, yeah. uh, that was a, a process of, uh, of decompression, as they, as they spoke about in the chapter. My idea, uh, I would hope that someone picked it up, was to talk about you know, first place this as, a, as an example of the rigidity of, of the military rule, of the government that was in place. And where are the girls? Oh, boys. Right? And then go in here. And these are other oh, visual. Is that the right thing? No. Right here. Yeah, I see, oh, yeah, I see yeah. her. Yeah. I see her oh, right wow. there. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but, it's and then, and then, like, like, <laughs> come on. And then, <laughs> and then show this. Females are there. Who's that, by the way? Everybody know? Lula. Yes. Luis Ignacio Lula. He's in jail right now. He's in jail right now. He's on the wall. He's right there. He's right there. He's right there. He's right there. If you guys don't, yeah. you guys don't know, he's in jail. I want to make sure people know. I did not. Yeah. And this picture I chose not because it was of the time, but also because it was a it was an interesting contrast to the picture, the the previous one, the how democracy basically. You are, you are an artist. It's a beautiful mind, but just, so you know, artistic your artistic but just in slides. So anyway, we can talk about that. But I really want to not lose my train of thought with sovereignty. So, oh, yeah. sovereignty? So, uh, as I was saying, sovereignty. Um, after this great, great, great interruption. <laughs> uh, no, amazing. Amazing. So, uh, so uh, what I wanted to talk about was the fact that sovereignty is at the core of what Latin America has always struggled. It's a, it's part of our identity. I'll tell you the national motto of Honduras. There you go. I'm talking about Honduras. <laughs> it's libre, soberana, e independiente. Oh wow. Yeah. Free, <laughs> sovereign, and independent. We are not free. We are not sovereign, and we are not independent. <laughs> but it's a hope. It, it's a hope. It's a hope to one day achieve that. Mm -hmm. And um, that's the key theme of the of the, of the chapter. 
and speaks to every single Latin American country. Everybody wants to have the two dimensions of, of sovereignty that Wynne mentions, which are one, political, uh, sorry, um, popular sovereignty, which is you know, the sovereignty of achieving that, uh, achieving the sovereignty of the people over the elites, over the ones that control the power, that control the, the, the wealth of the nation, which has been a part of you know, the entire history of Latin America. It's been the case that whenever things start going well in Latin America, what brings a regime down? Inequality. You know, people start seeing the wealth is concentrated over there. Polarity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's get them down. And someone rises up, says, all right, we're going to change it, we're going to change it, we're going to change it, starts bettering things. Yep, it stops. sorry, it Start it stops again. Inequality keeps rising. Again, it's a, it's a never-ending cycle. Mm -hmm. It's a never-ending never -ending cycle of rebellions, which is another thing that they go into in the revolution chapter, which is yep. that, you know, Latin America has gone through so many rebellions. Definitely. But very, very few rev revolutions, which is seizing the means, of, well, not the means of production, but yes, the means of production. And <laughs> I don't want to sound too Marxist, but. Wow. <laughs> you're too passionate you're right now. You're too passionate yeah, yeah. Right now. <laughs> I was going to knock on the, on the wood that I saw here. So anyway, uh, it's, uh, it's that. That's the, that's the history of, of, uh, of Latin America. And sovereignty is such a, a key concept. And uh, you, can, you can see the other aspect of it as well, which is it doesn't only extend to our, you know, the, the people, the majorities struggle to achieve sovereignty over its nation. It's the country's struggle to achieve independence from external powers. And that goes, every single example, and that chapter is honestly beautiful because they go into, into three examples. One, the example of, um, of Jamaica and how it was undermined by the U.S. as it tried to reclaim lots of its, uh, of its natural resources, of, of its oh, resources, right. and to set its own foreign policy. And it was undermined by the U.S. because you can't go against what we say in our sphere, in our backyard. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, where, is it? where is it? Why am I blanking on the... On the... Panama? Panama, yes. <laughs> and the, Panama. And that's one, that's one perspective. Right? that we're trying to reclaim our national sovereignty over our own resources. And we have the occasion of the, 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 the situation of Panama, which is an invasion, uh, an overt invasion from the U.S. to protect the interests of their country over it. In that way, invading and, and, and just undermining sovereignty in general for the nation. And then you have Colombia, which is both of them at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's the perceived... Uh, weakness of popular sovereignty, you know, a, a nation that most of its non-core area are disconnected, were at that point at least, yeah. still, are disconnected from, from the main core area, you know, that, that goes to the notion of what popular sovereignty is, you know, sovereignty over a nation per pertaining to, to one nation, and also how it struggles with the U.S. intervention during the, during the drug wars and whatnot, and trying to set what the solution for the drug war had to be, for, for, for the cartels and drug trafficking had to be. And that's where they try to, to make a solution for Colombia that it's entirely Colombia, not Venezuela. set by the US. So, um, I'm curious about something. So I've had this conversation for many years, but I've never had an answer. Mm -hmm. So what I understand is that the sovereign nations in South America, there are 33 nations, right? Mm -hmm. So at the present day, there are many world powers pressuring one another and groups of nations around Latin America and the Caribbean to do business and allow those powers to maintain their sphere of influence mm -hmm. around the nations. Meanwhile, there's a lot of resources in almost all the nations of Latin America that are not being exploited to the benefit of exactly what you're talking about, being able to, like Panama, for example, had to bow down and ask the U.S. to come in because their army was not ready to face the military offense, which was according to, I mean, there's always a story behind the story. Right. So what is it within the nations of Latin America that 
doesn't allow the same kind of development that's happened in certain other um, sovereign nations around the planet. <laughs> Like, for example, U.S., China, <laughs> the, the imperialists <laughs> of all history, the Spaniards, the Portuguese, like, the European empires. The U.S. is a neo-imperialist. Like, exactly. That's what it is. So what is it, like, for example, there's the Venezuelan petroleum reserves. Ecuador has huge petroleum reserves. Brazil. There's there's minerals. There's so many resources. I just want to say it's like I just not sound. I don't want to sound pessimistic or anything, but I think the reason the Latin America does, doesn't get to develop how all these other countries on the other side of the world are developing is because of us. Honestly, because of the United States, because we're always in there. We're always in there, no matter what. I don't. I don't. On the war on drugs, we went. Listen, listen. Oh God. Listen, we went in there. We we in there to fight the the United States went in there. The US so, government the US government, to be more specific, went in there with the goal of fighting the war on drugs. And let's say even before that, to fight the the commun exact communism. So what is the point of us saying are we gonna change that? No. I, I wanna tell you something. I, okay, it's good. Mark I said under the point of history is not to study it but to change it. I respect I respect everyone that, that I respect everyone that believes in it.